Hi there, my name's Brian, and this is another piece here where I'm trying to demonstrate a proof of concept that uh, these little four-track recorders, especially the more modern ones, are capable of producing some pretty good sound reproduction. As long as you have an idea of how to actually do the mixing, get an idea of where you want to be with it before you even start the project, because obviously you're very limited in what you can and cannot do. This project that I'm working on has been an ongoing project in my spare time. It's an analog thrash metal project that I started a little bit ago. I'm trying for my own personal interest re recapture the energy and sound of that era from the early and late 80s thrash metal genre. What I've done here is I got a Tascam 424 Mark III. This is one of the last four track cassette recorders that Tascam produced. I bought it within a couple months after they were first introduced on the market. Tascam claims that this unit is actually capable of rival rivaling the sound quality of the 60s and early 70s professional studio recording systems. Most people wouldn't think that these little machines are capable of doing such because people's experience that four track cassette recorders just didn't produce the sound they wanted they were airy or there's something fluttery about them or whatever you know whatever the excuses are and i kind of ran into that too but later on down the line after having spent several years working with daw4416 digital recorder which was a lot more flexible gave me more mixing options and more uh, control to fix anything that i may have screwed up I figured out ways that I can apply what I've learned to these old analog systems. And basically what it is, is just like back in the 60s and early 70s, your mixer and the recording technology was limited, so you pretty much had to get the sound you were wanting all taken care of before it was even put on tape. Because once it was on tape, there wasn't a whole lot more you can do with it. You didn't have a whole bunch of different EQing features. You didn't have a whole bunch of send, auxiliary sends to put into tons of different processors. So it all had to be taken care of up front. And this model here, this recorder, is pretty much the same way. You have a six channel mixer with three band EQ and it's got a parametric mid on all six channels. Your pan controls, only two auxiliary sends and it's got a line level input that you can adjust gain controls on it's also got a line in stereo line input in the back here where you can uh, put a sub mix in and then it's got two stereo outputs one controlled simply by the master fader here that's your standard output to like a mix down deck and then it also has the stereo monitor outputs which are controlled primarily by the same volume control that runs the headphones but of course the master fader is always in play it has a two bus system so you can record any number of mix onto two buses in stereo and it, or you can record directly on all four tracks at once via the inputs in the back and it also has four direct outputs and of course this system was equipped with dbx type 2 noise reduction and is capable of running at high speed normal speed with a plus or minus 12 percent pitch control how to best approach this this particular project it only will require eight tracks to do and that means it's going to require three mix downs three generations of tape the concept is is to be able to reproduce all that through the three mix downs and still provide a commercial level uh, recording quality or that is on par for what they had back in the day on many of those early thrash metal albums since that's the project I'm decided to take. The frequency range that works best on tape, what it reproduces the best, is generally mid-range frequency. And the lows and the highs don't produce as well, but of course with high speed recording and using chrome tapes, you get some better results from that. Lay down the rhythm tracks first since they were primarily within that range and I can overdub those again and again without losing much of the uh, tonal quality of the sound. So it was the stereo rhythm guitar tracks first, the bass track, and the guitar solo track. Those are what were recorded on the first four tracks, and then they were mixed down in the stereo onto the AW44 deck. They then got bounced back to this deck here with a new tape and recorded onto the stereo track. 
at which point I then recorded drums. And then I just mixed it down here onto this deck with the original submix. The drums got their own two tracks, the submix got their tracks. Then just adjust the EQs just a little bit to make up for any kind of loss and send back to the mix down deck. And then the same thing again. All that gets submixed and put back into a stereo track on the, this little Tascam machine. I decided I was just going to record vocals raw onto these channels. I wasn't going to bother trying to set up their dynamics processing or EQ or anything. So they were recorded raw in here and I decided I'm going to use the direct outputs and back and I'm going to send them to my vocal processors that are up here in the rack. The lead or main vocal track is going to go into my Tascam TA1VP. It's a simple basic run-of-the-mill vocal processor but it gives you mic modeling with tube modeling as well all adjustable you got auto-tune correction in case if you actually wanted to use it in which case this kind of music really don't have a need for it you have your compressor which also gives you a noise gate that you can set up however you need to a de -esser. you got your two-band EQ with multiple options of equalization and you have a double tracking feature which will give you two vocal tracks. That's going to be run back into channel 5 on the mixer here, at which point then of course I can set its levels within the rest of the mix. I can also do a slight adjustment on the three band EQ up here, and then I can also send out the signal via the effects sends right here through auxiliary 1 and 2, and they'll be coming down into here. My Lexicon dual stereo surround reverb effects processor. And of course those are brought back into channel 7 and 8 and if I feel like it, if I want some extra effects out of it, I'll also run another output stereo output into the stereo submix in the back. Other vocal channel here on number channel 1, it's just a harmony that only comes in for a short amount of time. So it's going to be sent direct out into the TC Helicon VoiceWorks processor, which I'm only going to pretty much use it the same as I use the Tascam. It's going to get uh, some compression and it's going to get a little EQ adjustment and that's it. And that'll be brought back into channel 6 here. And that way I can hopefully match it up really nicely with the vocal channels coming in or the vocal lines coming into channel 5. All those things will get processed back through the analog system here in the machine and then it'll get sent to the, uh, the outputs, the stereo outputs to the mix down decks once again over on the AW4416. Let's get things started and see how it all turns out. Well let's get it started see what it sounds like. This is just the mix, no mastering, no nothing. Yeah. 